guys, welcome to another episode of TFL Today, and today we have a really special episode, Nathan. That's right, guys. We're doing the top 10 overlooked and underappreciated cars out there that you should buy. Yeah, these are used cars. These are cars that we have driven and tested that we fell in love with, but for some reason didn't sell very well. So let's get right to it. Nathan, number 10, please. Number 10 is a beauty. It's the Jaguar XKRS from 2012. Right now, prices are going around $34,000. But it's a hell of a screamer. Yeah, you know, it was right after Ford sold Jaguar to Tata. Jaguar became its own company, and they were trying to build performance cars, and it was right before the F-Type came out. Right. So it was the last of the XK line, and it was fast, it was fun, it was loud, it had 500 horsepower and 502 pound-foot of torque, and it was relatively reliable. So this is a fun car that you can get, and it'll smoke most new cars. All right. Uh, speaking of expensive, this is exactly the opposite of that. This is inexpensive. This is a vehicle that competes with currently the small segment crossovers that are out there, including vehicles like the CX-3 and the Jeep Renegade. And that is the 2011 Suzuki SX-4. I almost said Honda. And this little baby, we both agree, is a real diamond in the rough. Very, very good off the pavement. Very, very good in snow. You can even find a manual version with all-wheel drive. Great little car. Okay, this is about as far as I can get up the trail in two-wheel drive, so I'm gonna switch it into auto mode. That means up to 95% of the power goes to the front wheels, but it can't allocate 50% to the rear wheels when needed. So let's try this in auto mode and see if I can make it up this hill. All right, that's auto mode, all-wheel drive, no problem. No problem at all. Yeah, you know, it was the small crossover that was before it's time. Yeah. Now they're red hot, Suzuki had it out there and you guys didn't buy it, but it's still a great car and it's relatively affordable, six to $9,000. So instead of going out and spending 20,000 for a brand new small crossover, just go and get yourself a Suzuki SX-4 and you'll be doing great in the snow. This next one is really dear to your heart because you actually owned one of these. Yeah, it's a 2006 Volvo V70R. It's uh, great in a straight line. If you can find the manual one, it had 300 horsepower, all-wheel drive, the most comfortable seats in the world. Mine was red with a really beautiful interior, and right now you can get them for 6 to 10K for 300 horsepower. Now, it won't go around a curve, but in a straight line, Whoa, it is fast. There are a lot of tuners out there who actually build things for these cars, too, and make them incredibly powerful. Now, this is your favorite, Nathan. Yeah, this is, this is, a, I know, you guys are going yeah, to sit down for this. The 2012 Honda, I said Honda. Well, technically it is. The 2012 Acura TL Super Handling All-Wheel Drive with six-speed manual transmission. These were great cars. I really enjoyed taking them around the track and driving them all over the place. One of the best, in my mind, vehicles that Acura made with kind of a homely looking nose. Some of you like it, some of you hate it. I'm kind of on... It had that beak. It had a beak, yeah. Yeah, yeah when Acura was trying to go beak for some reason. Now here's the good news. You can get one in good condition for around $16,000. They really are worth it. Great cars. Yes, I would own one if I didn't have to have a crossover SUV. Now here's another one that we both like. It's the 2015 Buick Regal GS with all-wheel drive. So okay. we're looking at you know close to 300 horsepower, all-wheel drive, uh, a car that just was fun, fast, and didn't really belong under the Buick name. I love this Ecotec engine. It's a two-liter. It puts out 205 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission and all four wheels via all-wheel drive. Now you can get a front-wheel drive version of this car with this engine and a six-speed manual transmission, and I highly recommend it. It's a kit. Well, really, it was an Opal, and so that, that what Buick has been doing since that it's time. It's rebranding Opals, yeah. And you can get those now for anywhere from 18 to 22K. Uh, really fast cars, and, you know, they're one of those underrated sleepers that if you pull up to a stop light and somebody wants to drag you, you're going to blow their doors off, especially if it's snowing or raining. Now, speaking of snowing, in other words, hell freezing over, uh, one of these cars is one of his favorites, and I don't understand why. And that is the Acura ZDX from 2013, Roman's favorite car. 
You know, that was like a, a moment in time when people decided that they wanted tall crossovers that had no back seat room, but they were sexy, right? Think BMW X6, Honda did the same thing with the ZDX, and I love the look of that car. Yeah, it was not practical, but I think actually Acura did it right. You know, maybe it's a personal thing, but I thought the car was extremely sexy, and they're getting cheap now, about 25 to 26K. If you do not like in-laws, perfect car to buy. Put them in the back seat, they'll hate you forever. All right, let's move on to number four, which is the 2014 Lexus ISF, and that had the big honkin' V8 in it. Yeah, it had those really cool stack for the first time tail pipes. It had a great exhaust note. Uh, it was, you know, uh, Lexus muscle car basically eight-speed transmission you know you could you could hoon that thing around it's gonna be like one of those cars like the Supra from days gone by right where it had a rear-wheel drive car a great transmission too much power pretty badass looking car and they're getting affordable about 40k right now well but when you think about it that is still holding its value pretty good too I mean that's a Lexus and so that's not a big surprise we've both driven it we both like it and we both think it's a handful when you really push it yeah, you know, it's the predecessor to the RCF, yeah. and I think that 20 years from now, people are going to be looking for that car, especially if they want to drift. Yeah, definitely. Now, speaking of a car that's popular with drifting, the 2011 Mazda RX-8. In many ways, a car that had so much going for it, but they just didn't quite make it past the finish line. Yeah, you know, it had just over 200 horsepower and not much more torque, so it really wasn't powerful enough, but it was a really cool car. And of course, the quirkiest part of this car, and you know it before I even say it, is a rotary engine. Which means that unlike other cars, it doesn't have pistons and cylinders. Instead, it's got a rotor, which means it revs like crazy, 10,000 RPM, plenty of horsepower, but not a lot of torque. You know, my first car that I really fell in love with was an RX-7, so I had a soft spot in my heart. So when they delivered it to my house, I was so excited, Nathan. And then I sat in it, and I was like this. Literally, I could not fit in the thing, and it tore my heart out of my chest because I wanted to drive it, and every time I drove it, my neck would crank, and I could not get back out of the car. But I love it nevertheless. I think it's a car that had some issues, so it, it did not have a lot of torque. It also went through oil, but it's a beautiful car, and, you know, they're cheap right now. You can get them between 10 and 15K. <laughs> guys out there, a lot of tuners, once again, love messing with this car and making it into a beast. Really hope that uh, Mazda brings back the rotary soon. Okay, speaking of bringing back, 2013 Chrysler 300 SRT8. Now, this vehicle was a badass mover. It really, really was. It's a fine gangster car. Yeah, total gangster car. And they got rid of it, but they still have the 300 around, and they've hinted maybe they'll bring it back, but they haven't done that yet. Yeah, so only a couple of years for the SRT8. Uh, we actually took it on uh, the racetrack. In, in Willow Springs? Yeah, yeah, in California. We were following the designer, Ralph Giels. And if I remember right, we were having a hard time keeping up with him in a car with, I think it had 460 horsepower. A four-door American sedan with 460 horsepower. Yeah, that, that is damn good. And it was a beast. It, it actually handled okay for something so heavy, but at the same time... Yeah, it's not a track car. It's something that you like to go straight very fast in. Yeah, get them while you can. 25K used. Uh, I actually put down 25K for one of those cars because I think they're going to go up in price. One of us does. Um, okay, let's move on to number one, and we both agree on this one. Yes. And that's the 2011 Cadillac CTSV Wagon. <laughs> automotive journalists bought one of those and that was it nobody else bought them <laughs> they're 500 very very limited run and it had a manual transmission as an option and it was a sweet ride yeah how could you not love a front engine supercharged car with not a lot of weight on the back wheels but big honking tires that's a wagon dude we took it up to the mountains and all we did was just burn rubber burn rubber burn rubber <laughs> It was kind of funny because the higher we went, the harder it was to burn rubber, but it still did it, man. It kept going all the way up to Leadville. Because it has this thing here. Look, look down here. Look at this. You see this thing? This is a stick. This is a manual transmission. 
But you know, for this car to have fun, this is what you need, the stick. Number one quirk. This car is so fun, it should be illegal. Yeah, they're holding their value, 33 to about 38,000. Yeah, definitely a car that if Roman gave me a raise, I would buy. Yeah, it's a badass, cool ass car, and get them while you can. They're hard to find. Like I say, those are a true gem uh, if you can actually find them. And we always do a bonus. What's our bonus? So this is kind of the opposite of that. Well, it's sort of, kind of. It's a 2011 Volkswagen Tiguan. No, Turag. It's the Touareg. <laughs> it's the Volkswagen Touareg hybrid. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself there. Yeah, Volkswagen got kind of uh, caught by not having a hybrid, and so they decided to actually make it, and they put a lot of money. And actually, this car was more of a luxury car. So it was one of these cars that was the right car, wrong brand, right? Yeah. If that had been an Audi, they would have sold the, you know what, out of them. But it was a Volkswagen, it was expensive, it was fuel efficient, it was good off-road, and nobody bought them. Nobody bought them, and it's a shame. Once again, you know, it's a funny thing. I think that the Touareg is one of those vehicles that is sort of like the unloved brother, and it really should, I feel, get more respect. Dude, I had that thing, I got, I got to drive it on the Autobahn. Yeah. I had it up to 160 kilometers, drove like a dream. Uh, and you can get them all day long if you can find one for about 18, 20K right now. And they're fuel efficient. What more do you want? Off-road, fuel efficient, all-wheel drive, crossover. The thing that everybody wants. Unfortunately, everybody bought the RX, the Lexus, and nobody bought the Touareg. Yeah, it's a shame. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. It was a lot of fun to bring this to you. And uh, we're going to do more of these lists in the future. By the way, don't forget to write below what you think should be on this list. Yeah, and if you like that bet behind us, Nathan and I mashed it up with the Hellcat, so click above to watch that video. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching, and check out TFLcar.com for more news, use, and real-world reviews. Underrated and underappreciated used car reviews. Ciao. Bye.